Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to take a moment to discuss the altcoin season that should be happening basically right now. I'm talking from a macro perspective, uh, and that is, of course, assuming the bottom is in. If 61k breaks and we actually lose that 61k level and we lose all the indicators implicated within that level, then yes, of course, no, the bottom is not in. Uh, and of course, we won't be seeing an altcoin season. Uh, we will be seeing a, a pretty bearish scenario play out. We're not really sure what that be because we would be breaking historical macro trends we'd be kind of thrown in the dark but let's just assume for a second here and by the way i think it is the more likely scenario so it's not really that massive of a leap of an assumption to make uh let's assume that the bottom is in here at 61k what will happen next well we should be seeing an altcoin season for the most part uh, and we also can start to make some vague speculation about when when bitcoin and cryptocurrency will top out as a whole okay so let's get into that okay because there's a few interesting things to discuss there um yeah, before we do it though, check out the VIP group on Telegram. We've got a VIP group chat sale. Let's move it to the side here so you can see it. Uh, my webcam is in the way. Uh, for five days from today, we have a sale here cutting the price down 90 USD. You'll get access to a VIP group until the 1st of April. Uh, you'll get all the trading signals that are currently pending. You'll also get access to four trading signals a week, as well as a 24-7 group chat. We've got 130 members in there right now, and you can become one of them. That's a sale. It's a limited price, uh, a limited time for a discounted price. So don't waste your opportunity. Now's your time to get in there if you want to do it. Uh, check it out, guys. Uh, if you want to make some money on altcoins, that's where you can do it. Um, now, let's get back into the content here. Okay, so moving away from Bitcoin today. We don't care about Bitcoin today. We know what happened. We know what needs to happen to Bitcoin. Uh, we know we need to get above 67,000. We've established this very, very well. We know we need to hold this 61K zone. It's mainly altcoins we're talking about, right? Uh, and Ethereum BTC comes to mind pretty much straight away. Uh, Ethereum BTC is showing us that the compression that we're seeing, the consolidation that we're seeing is running out of time. We're going to be moving soon, all right? Uh, and we really don't even need Ethereum BTC to, to understand that. We can just look at any crypto chart right now, even again, going back to Bitcoin. Where is Bitcoin? It's sitting on top of its bull market support bed. It's sitting on top of its macro support zone. There's no more room to wait around and daddle around, right? We have to move. We're moving even up, we've either up or down. That's it. We've got no more sideways to go, right? Very limited uh, consolidation time left here. We're, we're going to be moving very, very shortly. And, and, you know, that can be consolidated further on the Ethereum BTC chart. This is a chart that measures the strength of Ethereum in relation to Bitcoin, meaning when it goes upwards, Ethereum is outperforming Bitcoin. And right now, We've got macro lines, like lines stemming back from June last year and also from 2019, showing us a massive triangle pattern with massive compression and the compression ending. Uh, yeah, all the way here in May 2025, that may be correct. But if we look at the RSI, it's actually ending in, in December this year. And we're getting very close to the end of it already. And we're actually testing on the RSI, the breakout level. And we're getting close to testing the breakout level on the price chart. We've just flipped a major resistance zone for support as well. We're going to be attacking uh, the upper resistance level. So the fact of the matter is Ethereum BTC on a macro scale is running out of consolidation. Uh, it will be moving very shortly. And if we're, you know, that doesn't tell us too much alone, but if we flip that and we look into uh, the total three cryptocurrency market cap chart, we can see very clearly that on the total three cryptocurrency market cap chart, this is where you need to really perk up and pay attention, right? We have a five-step pattern that we saw in the last cycle. It's repeating perfectly in this cycle. You can see step four. Uh, let's go ahead and show you. Step four was the final consolidation with a retest of the ascending support line before a breach to the upside and parabolic bull market, okay? We are on step four. We are retesting the blue ascending support line. That was basically the last step before uh, the parabolic bull market breaching all-time highs. And also within that parabolic bull market on the total three chart, we entered an altcoin season. If we overlay the Bitcoin dominance chart and we look at the last cycle, take a look here on the left-hand side of the screen, when step four ended, right here where I'm marking, that is exactly the exact moment when Bitcoin dominance started to drop and hence when an altcoin season began. Given the fact that we're following this five-step structure and given the fact that on this five-step structure in the last cycle, the end of step four marked the, uh, the start of the altcoin season, we can assume that that is going to occur again. And if Bitcoin and cryptocurrency has actually bottomed here, if these trends do remain, if the total three does hold onto this blue level, we can assume that give or take, right? It, it doesn't have to be right now, but give or take, this is vaguely where altcoin season should be beginning. Right? And then we can go further with that. 
So we can go a little bit further. We can actually say, okay, if this is where altcoin season is meant to be beginning, assuming the bottom is in, right? If this is where altcoin season is meant to be beginning, this is where we're meant to be seeing that parabolic bull market, you know, do we have any way to estimate when we will top out? We actually do. It's not really super accurate, but it is It is there. It's a data point we can use potentially. Uh, it's the Bitcoin dominance chart. And Bitcoin dominance chart, of course, being a chart that measures the strength of Bitcoin in relation to altcoins, but we can actually go ahead and measure how long altcoin seasons have, have taken in the past and extrapolate that forward with a, a rough measurement. It's not really... You know, it's not really a precise trend, but it's, it's something, you know, we don't really have much this cycle, unfortunately, four year cycle is being deviated from quite heavily, even with this lengthy consolidation, we are nowhere near on track with the four year cycle, we're still about 180 days ahead of schedule, unfortunately. Uh, but let's go ahead and check it out here, we can see, for example, that, you know, uh, Bitcoin dominance started dropping back in February 2017, uh, it lasted the, the altcoin season lasted about 300 days, okay, so it took 300 days from the first actual major steep decline to the bottom of the altcoin season. The exact same thing occurred over here uh, in 2021. Again, about 300 days from the start of the steep decline to the bottom of, or the top of the markets, which was November, 2021. It wasn't actually the bottom of the Bitcoin dominance cycle, but it was the top of the markets. That's about 300 days there. Uh, and if we are going to assume it's gonna take 300 days this time as well, we could measure, let's just be conservative, right? And measure from April when we actually did top out on Bitcoin dominance, uh, we'd be bottoming out um, or topping out in the in the broader cryptocurrency markets in February. If we measure from today, let's just or, or let's just say a week ago when we actually bottomed, uh, we would be bottom uh, topping out in the cryptocurrency markets in April. And this kind of lines up with what we've been saying uh, over and over again. Really, I mean, you know, I know this isn't a strong trend. I'm literally just throwing out numbers here, uh, but it's worth noting that these data points are not just random data points. They are actually supported by regular cyclical structures. They are stronger than they seem. Um, you know, and, and when I say, you know, February to April next year, that's also not just a random date range. That date range actually makes quite a bit of sense. And I'll explain why right now. If we go to the BLX and we go ahead and take a look historically at, so let's just go to the weekly chart here. I'll remove my webcam out of the way so I can actually see the screen. Um, we'll go ahead and delete this line. We'll go to a logarithmic chart and I'm going to explain to you why that February to April range is more supported than it may seem. So we can go ahead and see that in prior cycles, it takes about 1,100 days uh, from Bitcoin reaching all-time high to Bitcoin breaching above that all-time high or, or reaching it again. 1,100 days, okay? It took that length of time back here in 2014. It took that length of time back here uh, in the last cycle we saw, and it didn't take that length of time this time, right? It only took, only took about 800 days, meaning we were about 250 days ahead of schedule, okay? Now, the expected top as per the four year cycle, which is what Bitcoin has traditionally followed, is October, 2025. 250 days ahead of schedule, the expected top is for October, 2025. So if we just go ahead and take October, 2025 and minus 250 days, right? That would bring us to a, uh, a date range that would be around February, 2025, which again validates that prediction uh, not prediction, but observation of where the, the top possibly could be based on the Bitcoin dominance chart, which was February to April next year. Uh, again, we're 250 days ahead of schedule, at least we were, and that would bring us to around February next year, which is within that February to April guideline. There's many other ways we could do this. We can look at this chart right here. We've done it before. Uh, I'm not going to do it again. Basically, you, you go ahead and uh, take the RSI line at 67. Uh, you take how long it usually takes from breaching that RSI line to reaching a top, every single cycle, it's minus 60 days. If it is minus 60 days again, it takes us to around April or March 2025. Again, validating that, that date range. There's a lot of reasons to be looking at that date range, in my opinion, uh, the April, you know, February to April next year as a potential left translated cycle top. There are a few reasons for it. We've looked into them uh, in the past. I don't really like dwelling on it. I don't really like speaking about it too much. Is the reason why I'm skimming over the data uh, because I don't, I'm not confident in it. I'm not confident in really anything uh, at this point. I don't know when the cycle top is going to be. Uh, you know, if we're going off, we're going off sheer trends and how strong the the trends are. We'd obviously say the four year cycle is going to be uh, correct, right? If we go to the four year cycle and, and we check out how strong this is, we can just show you right now. This is 
literally the entirety of Bitcoin's macro structures are within the four year cycle, like six separate date range trends, micro trends, all forming one larger uh, trend that predicts a top in October 2025. The only problem is we have deviated from the four year cycle. You know, some of the preliminary trends within the four year cycle um, or some of the minor trends within the four year cycle have seen deviations, right? For example, we broke all time highs before the halving. Right, we broke all-time highs 250 days earlier than expected. That may seem minor, but it's not minor, guys. This is a big thing. It's the first time ever that we've seen deviations within the four-year cycle. Never before have we seen them. Uh, so it's it's a little bit concerning, really, for the four-year cycle. And it does mean that we need to start looking at other potential uh, metrics for finding a, a Bitcoin top, right? Because the worst-case scenario is we look at the top being potentially between February and April next year, we find out we're wrong. We don't sell because there's no reason to sell. You don't just sell blindly. You sell when the indicators tell you to sell. So if there's no indicators telling us to sell at that time, we can just change our prediction and just say, okay, four-year cycle is correct. Right? There's no, there's no harm in us not following the four-year cycle. There is harm in us following the four-year cycle and then ending up being wrong and holding our bags all the way down the bear market. Right? Uh, and in not following the four-year cycle, it's important to note, it doesn't mean we're just throwing away the macro trends. We looked at macro trends in this video. We looked at the macro trend showing you that if we are going to see the market bottom here, which I believe we will, we will see an altcoin season next. That has nothing to do with four-year cycle. That is completely separate. That is a regular kind of uh, structural trend that is shown from the last cycle in total three, which we're seemingly following right now. Uh, and we will be seeing Bitcoin dominance drop if we continue this structural trend and do not break that ascending blue line. Uh, that has nothing to do with four-year cycle, really. It's a price prediction trend rather than a date range trend. Uh, so I'm not, you know, as I said, I'm not... I'm not willing to throw out the four-year cycle, not at all. I'm still looking at it very closely, but we do need to look elsewhere for when the top could potentially be. And I do think there is a decent case to make that that top could be uh, February to April next year. And as I've said in previous videos, I do think there is a decent case to make uh, that the top price could be uh, around, I think, 110 to 120, 130, somewhere in that price region. And why am I saying that? Well, I've done it before. I'll show you again. It's this chart right here, guys, right? It's the angle-based chart uh, showing us on the Bitcoin logarithmic scale that the angle from top to top is, is decreasing by a factor of around 50% each time. Uh, and that has led us to a point in which we can assume that if we see a top between, let's say, again, February, let's say February to around April next year, that would bring us to a top price according to this trend, which we have no reason to believe will remain intact, by the way. Uh, but it is there uh, and it, the trend is your friend until it ends. So we're just going to assume that it's going to remain intact. Uh, that would bring us to a top at around 120-ish, right? Somewhere 110, 120, somewhere in that price region. Again, we have no real reason to believe that will remain intact. Um, we just, that's all we have to go off really. Uh, and so we're going off of it, right? And that doesn't mean we're, we're, we're making predictions. We're not, we're just making observations about what could happen. But I think it's important to note that regardless of all this talk about where the top could be and where it couldn't be and whatever, what price is going to be at, what's important to note is what's going to happen next, right? And if we have bottomed here, if we have bottomed at 61K on Bitcoin, if we've found a bottom on a macro scale here, the historical trends do suggest that we see an altcoin season start around here. So that is something you need to be prepared for. I'm not telling you to buy altcoins right now. I'm not telling you to jump your entire net worth in altcoins. I'm telling you that is something to be prepared for. Uh, and perhaps when Bitcoin gets over its hurdles, gets over 67K, that's something you might want to uh, start doing. Or if you've already done so, uh, start stacking more. You know, that's that's up to you, really. It's your personal risk tolerance. You need to decide that. But that's, you know, food for thought right there. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the Bitrunix and Bing X exchanges. Guys, we have free money up for grab uh, right here. 5,500 USDT. You can see it right there on the screen. I've highlighted it. Sign up to win 5,500 USDT. If you use my referral link down below, 5,500 USDT, there's a chance to win it. And you'll also get, if you don't win it, a, uh, a referral link down there. 15% trading fee discount for life on the exchange, guaranteed. 
uh, and obviously a chance to win that cash. Exact same thing on Bing X. There is a 4,000 USDT reward for signing up, uh, potential reward. And then my refer referral link down below will give you a 15% trading fee discount regardless of whether you win or not. Uh, it takes literally 30 seconds to sign up for both of these exchanges. They're both global non-KYC. With my links below, you'll get those rewards and discounts. You're also getting access to a great exchange, with whichever one you choose. You know, both global non-KYC, both have never been hacked before. Uh, both have very low trading fees to begin with. So check out my links below and sign up if you're interested. Uh, again, I'll show you the VIP group chat uh, or the VIP channel, I should say. Trading signals, uh, group chat, access to trading plans four times a week. There's a sale right now. Limited time, guys. Discounted price for a limited time. So check it out now. Uh, don't miss your opportunity. And then finally, we have the Become a Trader 10 unit course on sale again. Uh, that is the bull market sale. So again, you know, just like VIP, a discounted price for a limited time. Uh, you want to learn how to trade? You want to learn TA? You want to learn how to do charts like I do in this video? You can do it. It's all there in the course, university style content developed by myself and Megawell Crypto. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you tomorrow. Cheers.